Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this Organic Chemistry Lab video covers an aldol condensation of propanol experiment. This is part two, reaction, purification, and characterization. I'll start off by measuring out 15 milliliters of propanol. This is also known as propionaldehyde and it's a three carbon aldehyde that'll be the starting material for this week's experiment. The graduated cylinder that I'm using here has graduations every one milliliter, so it's possible to estimate out to the next digit. So this will be 15.0 milliliters of propanol that I have measured out here. Now I'll pour the propanol into a 50 milliliter round bottom flask and add a couple of boiling chips to get ready for the distillation. The first distillation in this experiment purifies the propanol. That's important because propanol isn't a particularly stable molecule. It has a tendency to react with itself and react with air to form higher boiling impurities. Next, I'll attach the flask with the propanol in it to the distillation apparatus and distill the propanol. I've covered distillation pretty extensively in other videos, so I'm not gonna go into it in great detail here, but I will point out a few important things. First of all, make sure that your joints on your distillation apparatus are snug or you could lose vapor. Second of all, cooling water should go in through the bottom port of the condenser and out through the top. Be sure you turn on the cooling water. I've already got it started in this distillation. Then pay attention to the position of the thermometer. It should be like it is here where the bulb is just below the elbow of the distillation head. That'll give you the most accurate temperature reading on the distilling vapor. Finally, I have the variable transformer set at about one-third power, which is all you really need for propanol because it's a very low boiling material. Here I'm showing the distillation in progress. When you look inside, you can see the vapor climbing up inside the apparatus, touching the thermometer bulb, and then rounding the corner to condense on the condenser as a liquid and roll down into the collection vessel. Here's a view inside the collection flask with a drip rate of about one drop per second. That's a good rate for a distillation. You should keep an eye on the temperature during the distillation. Here you can see it's around 45 degrees C. Propanol is known to boil around 47 to 49, so this is pretty close. The impurities in the propanol are all gonna be higher boiling, so you'll just wanna collect the lowest boiling fraction here, and the distillation will slow down and stop on its own before the higher molecular weight impurities start coming over. You can see in the collection flask here that the distillation rate has slowed considerably. The distillation's almost done. Here we're looking down into the distillation apparatus as it nears completion. When the propanol fraction has stopped distilling, you should turn off the power to the distillation and remove the heating mantle. There's going to be residue left over. That's the higher boiling impurities we're trying to get rid of. Now I'll measure the volume of the distillate and see how much propanol I have. I'll pour it into this graduated cylinder and then look at the volume. When I read the graduated cylinder, I can see that I have 10.8 milliliters of propanol. The last digit is estimated. The amount of propanol that you'll recover from the distillation will vary. This is from a pretty old bottle, so 10.8 is kind of a low yield. If you use a newer bottle of propanol, your yield might be higher. The important thing is to record the amount that you do get so that you can calculate the yield later on. Next, I'll be measuring out 2 molar aqueous sodium hydroxide, NaOH. This is the catalyst for today's experiment. Here, I'm measuring out 5.00 milliliters of this solution. Now I'll pour that sodium hydroxide solution into a 100 milliliter round bottom flask and I'll add a stir bar. Next, I'll attach the flask to this reflux apparatus and get the solution stirring. Next, I'll add the propanol through the top of the condenser into the reaction vessel with the sodium hydroxide. I'll basically add it as fast as I can pipette it in here. Propanol is not soluble in 2 molar sodium hydroxide, so you'll see a two-phase mixture develop and some cloudiness. Today's aldol reaction is quite an exothermic process, and once the reaction gets going, it'll generate quite a bit of heat, enough to actually spontaneously boil the solution. If you touch the flask at this point, you can definitely feel the heat. It's uncomfortably hot, and there's the propanol boiling. The reaction generates the most heat in the early stages, then it'll gradually slow down and cool off. When it reaches room temperature again, we could be pretty confident that it's over with. So continue to stir until you feel the flask is about at room temperature. Here's the equation for the aldol reaction that's going on in the flask. Two molecules of propanol are condensing to form an aldol product. The alpha position of one propanol shown in black attacks the carbonyl carbon of another propanol molecule shown in red to make a new carbon-carbon bond in the product between the alpha and beta positions. As the reaction progresses, it may take on a slight yellow appearance. After it's cooled to room temperature, take it off of the reflux apparatus and pour it into a separatory funnel. 
Then we'll separate the upper and lower layers. Here I'm adding some water droplets to the separatory funnel and observing what happens. If you look carefully, you can see them falling through the upper layer and joining with the bottom layer. What's most apparent is the splash that they make when they hit the bottom layer. This helps confirm that the lower layer is the aqueous layer. Now I'm draining the aqueous layer out the bottom of the separatory funnel. Then I'll pour the upper product containing layer into a round bottom flask to distill it. Remember, when you do a distillation, the distillation flask should be about half full, so I've selected a 25 milliliter round bottom flask here. Then I'll add a couple of boiling chips. Now I'm going to carry out another distillation. The purpose of this distillation though is quite a bit different from the first one. The aldol product in today's reaction has an alpha proton and it's subject to a dehydration reaction where sodium hydroxide plucks that alpha proton off and hydroxide is eliminated. That reaction is shown here. It's an equilibrium process where the equilibrium doesn't strongly favor products. So we need to help the reaction along by distilling the products off as they form. And this works because the products are more volatile than the aldol starting materials. The OH in the aldol product really makes it a lot less volatile. It has a lot stronger intermolecular forces and it boils a lot higher than the dehydration products. Here's a view of the distillation in progress. The aldol dehydration products are much higher boiling than the propanol starting material in the previous distillation, so I've set the variable transformer to about 3 quarters power here. And here's a side view of the distillation. Keep an eye on the temperature of the vapor during the distillation. It should remain below 140 degrees Celsius. If it climbs above that temperature, you should reduce the amount of heat by dialing back the variable transformer a bit. If it climbs much higher than 140, there's a chance that the aldol product might be distilling instead of the dehydrated aldol product. So just as a reminder, what's collecting over here in the vessel on the right is the dehydrated aldol product in water. There could also be a little bit of propanol starting material left over in there as well, and we'll get rid of that in a final distillation step later. Keep the distillation going as long as the vapor is below 140 degrees. However, you're going to need to stop before you distill the dryness. So keep an eye on that distillation flask, and when it gets to a point that looks kind of like this, there's very little liquid left, turn off the variable transformer and lower the heating mantle. Now that the distillation is complete, I have the dehydrated aldol product and water in the flask. I need to remove the water by adding magnesium sulfate. Add enough to make a thin layer in the bottom of the flask and then swirl it around. If it gets swirled up, you've added enough. If it's all clumpy, you'll need to add a little more. Now it's time to filter the product to remove the drying agent. I'll get a piece of filter paper and fold it several times to make it into a cone. Then I'll put that into a funnel and filter that material into a 25 milliliter round bottom flask so I can distill it in the next step. Here I'm getting the mass of a clean dry vial. I'll use this to collect the distal in the final product, and I can get the weight of the product then by difference. Here I'm showing the third and final distillation in progress. The point of this distillation is to purify the dehydration product, 2-methyl-2-pentenal. It's possible that unreacted propanol still may be present in the reaction mixture, so it's important to only collect the fraction that boils in the appropriate range. That's why I have a beaker over here to collect any material that comes out in a forerun. That's material that boils below the boiling point of the desired compound. Literature values for the boiling point of this compound range from 130 to 136 degrees Celsius. To be safe, I'm going to collect the fraction that boils between 120 and about 140 degrees Celsius if it gets that high. At this high temperature, there's not much danger that propanol will be present. Now that the vapor is at the appropriate temperature, I'll switch out collection vessels and begin collecting in the pre-weighed vial. As before, it's important to keep an eye on the temperature during the distillation and also not let it distill to dryness. Here I'm lowering the heating mantle before it gets to that point. Now I'll get the mass of the product in the vial, and by difference, I can tell the mass of the final product. This will be important for yield calculations. And when you're doing your yield calculations, it's important to remember that the balanced equation for this reaction is two molecules of propanol giving one molecule of 2-methyl-2-pentenal and one molecule of water. So it's not a simple one-to-one -one ratio here, it's a two-to-one ratio. Now I'll characterize the product using IR spectroscopy. I'll put a small amount of product in one of the ATR crystal wells, and I'll put that on the IR spectrometer. Operation of the IR spectrometer software, the Omnic program, has been described in previous videos. So I'm just going to show the collection here, and you can refer to one of those prior videos for processing and other details. 
Here's a high resolution IR spectrum of the product. You should identify all of the peaks in the functional group region. Finally, I'll prepare a sample for proton NMR analysis by syringing in 0.6 milliliters of deuterochloroform into an NMR tube, then adding one drop of my product mixture, capping the tube, inverting it a couple of times, and writing my initials at the top in a Sharpie marker. Your NMR data will be acquired and then sent to you by email, either as a PDF file or as a raw data file that you need to process in, in Bruker's Topspin NMR processing program. Here's a high resolution image of a proton NMR spectrum of the product. You should interpret the peaks by drawing the structure of the product and showing all the protons, and then drawing letters next to each proton that correspond to letters drawn next to each one of the signals. There's a very small amount of propanol that appears in this spectrum, so just be aware of those minor peaks. This concludes this video on the Aldol experiment. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video, and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.